Welcome to Abacus Insight by Argus Software. This video is an overview of the distribution management functions of Abacus Insight. Abacus Insight is a full-featured enterprise management system built around the needs of the distribution, wholesale, and light manufacturing industries. It is scalable, proven, and configurable to the needs of your business. The system comprises modules. The operating modules are built on top of a core set of accounting modules. The menu gives you some idea of the breadth of, of the Abacus Insight distribution system. This includes inventory management, sales management, purchase orders, freight management, accounting, along with modules for handling the interchange of information electronically with your trading partners, if required, equipment and facilities management, payroll, and contact management. Let's start with sales management. Let's go into the order management and we'll go into the management screen. That allows us to see all of the orders that are in the system based on selection criteria that you have defined. So any of these criteria can be used to select transactions. So I'm going to say yes bring in this range and if I want to order the transactions by right now they're ordered by customer but if I want to do it by let's say order date then I can do that and let's say I want to look at a particular order here we'll go to the last one in this particular screen we can see the details associated with each of the orders we can see information about historical orders and items themselves and about the customers and the actual screens that are here are completely definable by you so that you can define through this column selector the actual order and content of the act of the screens as you as they appear then of course they can be saved as your default screens in addition you can print orders uh, invoices picking slips and so on directly from here and these can either be printed faxed or emailed Let's go into the order here that we have. When I drill down into the order, what I can see is the detail of that order. Or if I need to add an order, it's as simple as saying add, and I could have done this from the front screen, who the customer is, and check their credit limits, and enter, let's say, the purchase order number associate with the order. Anything else about it by way of shipping information and so on. I can save that, go right into the details and add details into the transaction. And I can say what number of items are being ordered. So I can just keep adding, let's say, whatever is needed. And if there's not available inventory, it will actually come back and tell me that. When I'm ready to ship the order, I can change its status from pending to assigned, which means product is assigned to the order. And if there is a need to check the credit again at that status, it can be confirmed that it's still valid to ship. Do I want to ship exactly as ordered if there is product available? And in which case, the items are automatically assigned. In this case, there is the tracking by lot, but this is optional. You can do it at the item level, you can do it at the lot level, or you can go lower and track by serial number. And in this particular case, product was available and there were no back orders. If you're using locations, it automatically assigns the location of where the product is in the warehouse for picking purposes. So you could then go up and print the picking slip associated with this particular order. When you're ready, you would change the status of the order to completed, and it would then be ready for committing and going to accounting. Let's go into the purchase order system. I will go into what is called the purchase order management screen. This allows me to see all of the orders that are out there, along with requisitions and receipts. Again, I can select by any criteria that is on the list here. I can save the selection criteria that I have and make it a default, make it available for others if needed. So let me bring in the purchase orders that I have and I can look at the orders that are out there. I can arrange in any order that I find convenient to me. 
So what I've got then is a list of, of purchase orders and I'll go to this particular one here and it says these are the items that are on this purchase order. If I double click on it I can go into the purchase order. It says that an approval is required so it's maintained on hold until that approval is actually given. I can then modify any information that is on here, add additional details. You'll notice that in this particular case a lot is already pre-assigned. Typically lots are not given, if they're given at all, until the receipt of the product. But if you, need, if you know the specific lot that you want, you can specifically order that at the, at the purchase order level. On all of these screens you've got various options on how to bring information in. And so if I did have requisitions, I could have brought them in all automatically for that vendor. I could select manually from whatever is out there based on different criteria and so on. I can also look at the vendor cross-reference information and build a cross-reference file for each vendor, giving the vendor's name, description, uh, cost, and so on. When I'm ready, I can go ahead and, and either print, fax, or email the purchase order to the vendor. Let's say the purchase order was approved and released and it's now time to actually receive products. So we'll take this purchase order and we'll go to the receipts and we'll add a receipt for this particular purchase order. So the business rules we'll apply will be our standard receipt rules. We'll select to manually receive all items but it could be automatic. We'll just see what happens. We'll select the particular purchase order, but if I knew it I could have dropped it in automatically. And is there going to be a particular place it will move to once it is here? We'll now say yes, we'll manually select the items. Do we want all these items? And the answer is yes, we will. We'll actually take them all, but we could have selected amongst those. And if we look at the details that have come in, we can see that this is what was originally ordered. At this point, we could either assign locations or say where the product is going to be stored in the warehouse. Let's say the purchase order has been approved, released, and now the product is being received. So I'll go into the receipts, and what I'll do is I'll add a receipt for the purchase order that we had there. We'll go in here, we'll say, we'll use the standard business rules that we have either manually select or automatically receive all items. We'll do a manual selection. We'll say what purchase order we're actually receiving on. And so we'll find the purchase order, which is this one here that we're receiving. And it drops in information related to that. And we'll say, yes, that's all correct. And now let's look at the details that go with the order. And since these happen to be the items that we've received, I'm going to say, yes, let's receive all of those and we'll receive those into the warehouse. These are the items, these are the quantities, and we don't necessarily know about price at this point, but we'll assume it's okay because it becomes a tentative item price. And you'll notice that there's lots that have been issued associated with this. Before we had one where the lot was actually defined, and now we've got two new lots, so we're tracking by lot. Not required, but it's available. Or we could actually track by adding serial numbers in here as well. So all sorts of options. If we know where the item is going to be put away, then that can be entered here, or after the fact, it can be entered. Let's go to the primary here. Later, at some point, we will receive an invoice. And the invoice amount can be controlled so it must match the item detail and you can be forced to enter that information and if there had been any additional charges they would be also entered onto here such as tax freight and other. The option exists of actually allocating these along with any third-party costs as part of the landed cost on the invoice. This would then be into the average and last cost of the items. I might mention that as you receive items, actually it's the time of order, you can say are these being ordered for stock against a specific order, are they being used for consumption, how are they being used, and it also integrates with our equipment maintenance module. When the accounting people are ready, they would then flag the receipt as being ready to commit and it would then go to accounts payable and 
do all of the accounting and create the open the open item in the accounts payable. The system is fully integrated with the sales orders going into the inventory, going into accounting, going into accounts receivable, creates commissions in what we call our settlements processing if needed. If there is freight involved, it is sent across to the freight management system for dispatch purposes. Purchase orders is similarly integrated. Receipts will be transferred to the accounts payable module for standard receipts. Where contracts are involved, it will be transferred to the settlements processing, particularly where there are advances given against the contracts. Inventory will be updated with the items, costs, quantities, and so on that have been received. If there have been orders that have been related to equipment, they will be automatically transferred against the equipment in the Equipment and Facilities module. If there are orders coming from the order management system, sales order system, where there is a drop ship, then it will be automatically transferred against those orders in the order management system. The system is rich in reports, so if we look at the order management reports, we'll see that there's a range of reports related to sales orders, deliveries, commissions, uh, generation of tags, and so on. If we look at the sales order reports, we'll see that there are edit reports. We can see that there are gross margin reports by item, by customer. We can see that there's unavailable reports, unavailable item reports, customer summary reports, and so on. But very important, there are analysis reports, ad hoc reports, on the information that is in the system so that you can get a report on any piece of information that you want, which you could then also export to a spreadsheet if that is desired. This was a very brief overview. We haven't touched on a lot of important functionality in the system. For example, consignment sales, drop ship orders, master orders, the splitting of orders, importing orders including EDI orders, customer and salesperson web orders, handling of discounts, commissions, deposits and cash received on orders, royalties, freight charges and freight management, foreign exchange, use of barcoding and handheld computers, accounts receivable, accounts payable, accounting, and much more. Our system is our passion and we would love to share more about it with you. Once we understand your business processes and your requirements, then we can run through the system to show you how it can meet your needs. Argus Software has been a business since 1979, meeting the needs of various businesses, distributors, wholesalers, light manufacturing, and others. We look forward to learning more about your business and your requirements. Thank you.